What's happening guys? So I'm super excited to make this video. This is not going to be another video about how to drive Uber, which has been shown to make about the same or even less than minimum wage. Or delivering food or anything like that. <laughs> oh damn, bro, that's how we rock it? The truth is, most of the common options out there for making money on the side are just not that good. They usually pay less than minimum wage and you'd be better off just picking up extra hours at your job. Ain't nobody got time for that. But there is one thing that you do have time for and that is hitting the like button right below this video because it took forever to make and I really do appreciate it. Smash it. No, but seriously, the feeling of making your first bit of money outside of a normal job is incredible. This is all I have to give left. Thank you for the entertainment fee. And as the biggest YouTuber in my city, wait. As the biggest YouTuber on my street, I know a thing or two about making money online. And this is a great way to make extra money on the side or even just to segue into starting your own business. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over what I consider to be the top eight side hustles to make money right now, although you probably can't do some of them because of the quarantine, but after that's over, you can make more money. So number eight on the list, my number eight suggestion is going to be getting paid to be somebody's friend. Yes, you heard that right. You can get paid to be somebody's friend on rentafriend.com and it pays around 10 to $50 an hour. Now, before you go in the comments section and you're like, say nobody would ever pay $50 an hour just to be somebody's friend. Think about the last time that you traveled somewhere. Let's say you went to Vegas, for instance. Think about all the work you had to do planning the trip and thinking about all the different places you were gonna go and figuring out what times you were gonna go to different places, what restaurants you were gonna eat at, what sites you were gonna see. Chances are you ended up going somewhere at the wrong time and getting stuck in traffic or just wasting a ton of time. Maybe you ended up having to wait in a really long line like those ridiculous people who wait outside of the Apple store to get the newest iPhone. <laughs> now, for instance, I lived in Las Vegas for about three years while I was going to school, and I consider myself basically a local because I did go out and explore it a lot. And I can basically tell you the spots that are completely overrated and the ones that are really good. And with this site, you can basically just hire someone to show you around the city, and it's kind of like having a personal travel guide. And if somebody's a local, they've been living there for years, and they know all the best spots, they can pretty much show you which ones to avoid so you don't waste your time and your money, and which ones are worth it. This way you don't have to spend as much time researching and the whole experience is just gonna be a lot smoother. And Las Vegas is a really good example because the big casinos spend so much money marketing to people. They want you to think that their attractions are the best even though in reality, a lot of the time, the funnest things to do are the ones that have zero marketing. And a lot of the great spots in Las Vegas, for instance, are the ones that you would only know about if you're a local. And then a lot of the time with the spots that are really well known, there's certain times that are better to go to them than others. So for instance, I could tell you the best times to go to the Las Vegas sign in order to get a photo with it so that you don't have to stand in a long line. So if you're familiar with the city that you live in and it's a place that a lot of people like to travel to, you can sign up for this site and make a lot of money just by showing people around. Number seven on the list is going to be golf caddying. Now golf caddies can earn up to $100 to $200 an hour and that doesn't include tips. And as a caddy, you basically just carry different clubs and bags around and then you just hand the goal for the right club at the time that they need it. Now it does help if you know which clubs are which and which clubs they would probably want to use in different situations and that way you just have it ready for them right off the bat. They don't even have to ask you for it. Now this is really great because you're going to get a awesome workout doing this. You have to carry the clubs around and so you're basically getting paid to work out. You also get really good networking opportunities because you're spending a lot of time around people who are probably successful. And believe it or not, there are caddies making well over a million dollars a year, like Jordan Spieth's caddy. Now you can find work as a golf caddy by visiting your local country clubs or golf courses. And depending on where you live, this is more of a seasonal job, so you're probably gonna get most of your work in the spring and the summer. Number six on the list is gonna be package delivery. So examples of this would be like Amazon Flex, and they pay around 18 to $25 an hour. You can make really good money doing this and you do need a vehicle that has plenty of space So either a pickup truck or a van now one problem I do see with this is generally from what I've been hearing They limit the drivers 
to around 12 hours a week. So it's not something that you can do full time just yet. And this is because they need extra drivers at certain times of the week where there's a lot of traffic or a lot of packages that need to be delivered. And then they don't need them at other times. It's also a little bit seasonal in some ways because you're gonna get way more hours if you're working during the last three months of the year known as Q4, just because there's so many more packages being delivered around that time. Number five on the list is going to be moving and hauling. Now this is one of my absolute favorite side hustles. I've been doing this ever since I got my first vehicle when I was a teenager. So whenever somebody moves or they buy a new couch or they get a new washer or anything like that, they need somebody that's going to move whatever they want move from point A to point B. And that somebody generally has to have either a truck or a van. And a lot of the time the big moving companies, the ones that are in your city, have minimum service charges or they will only help somebody out if they're moving them for like several hours. So if somebody just wants one object move from point A to point B, they generally can't hire one of these big companies. Either that or they do hire the big company, they pay for three hours and it only takes takes like 45 minutes to do the job. So most people end up begging their friends who have trucks to help them, or they end up overpaying, or they try to find somebody on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace that will help them out for a lower price. And so this is where you can come in and profit. You can buy an old used truck for just a few thousand dollars and you can start helping people out. It also helps if you have a trailer, you can make even extra money if you have one of those. And then you wanna go on Craigslist or Facebook and just post an ad for moving in the services section. Now, when I did this, I'd make somewhere around 50 to $80 an hour, but I only had a small truck. I didn't even have a trailer. And I know a friend who had a much bigger truck and he'd make over $100 an hour. Now, a similar side hustle to this, which is number four on the list that also requires a truck is going to be snow plowing. Now, this one generally does require a medium to large size truck just because you do have to have some power in order to plow the snow. But you can make a ton of money doing this. This is some serious cash you can make on the side. I personally knew a guy who made over $40,000 one winter just in a three, four month period or so just from plowing snow. And if you don't believe me, look on sites like plowsite.com where people who do this talk about how much they make. Now this is obviously a seasonal business, so you can only do this a few months out of the year, but you can make some serious cash on the side. And you can even combine this one with number five on the list where you know eight or nine months out of the year you're doing moving and hauling, and then three months out of the year you're plowing snow. And of course, this is a business that probably won't work for you if you live in San Diego where it hasn't snowed since the 1960s. Now again, you'd use Craigslist or Facebook to post this service and you'd also get a lot of business by word of mouth just by doing a good job and then other people will tell their friends about you. Or if that's too much work for you, you can always consider other sources of income. Just kidding. <laughs> Number three on the list is going to be a seasonal house decorator slash personal shopper. A lot of wealthy people want their houses to be decorated, but they don't want to have to do it themselves. So one thing you might be noticing on this list is a lot of these jobs are seasonal and that's actually a good thing because that means big companies can't come in there and take over the entire market. It wouldn't make sense for a big company to start an entire business just for three months out of the year and so that's why there is so much opportunity for you especially in the last three months of the year. So many people will pay over a thousand dollars just for you to decorate their house and their Christmas tree and for you to go out and get the decorations for them. Now this is good for Halloween as well as Christmas. You can also be a personal shopper and buy gifts for people. And if you're one of the three people in the world that's actually good at wrapping gifts, you can do that as well. No, but seriously, like how do people actually get good at that? Whenever I try to wrap a gift, it looks like a drunk teenager tried to do it. It's, it's, it's bad. Next on the list is going to be garage sale hopping and thrifting. So a great quote by one of our modern philosophers Macklemore is one man's trash is another man's come up. Wait, what? Anyways, you can find amazing items at garage sales for pennies on the dollar. Antiques and collectibles are great for making money. Furniture is really great for making money if you have the room to store it. There are a ton of options out there, you just have to be creative. And the best place to look for things to sell is to go on eBay and then look at the completed listings section. And this will give you an idea of what something is buying and selling for on the market. And all you need for this is a phone and a laptop. Now this is one I've been doing since I was in my early teens. I didn't even wait until I had a truck or a car to do this. Now a slightly different approach if you live in a college town is to wait until the end of the semester. And inevitably, so many of the students will end up just getting rid of all their furniture 
furniture, a lot of the times their TVs and different possessions, and they'll just leave it on their lawn or leave it right next to the dumpster. And I know this sounds gross, uh, you know, dumpster diving and stuff, but I found a fully functional flat screen TV one time that was worth $800 brand new, and it pretty much looked brand new that some frat guy left outside of his uh, frat house when he moved for the semester. Now, if you're too lazy to go out there and actually search for stuff, which I don't blame you with the virus going around, you can try my number one on the list. And that is flipping items online. This can be an amazing side hustle if you have enough cash to buy and sell things. This is another one that I've been doing since I was very young. And this one's a little bit more passive, so you don't have to spend as much time doing it. You kind of just wait until a good deal falls into your lap. So I still do this one to this day, but I just don't spend that much time doing it. I just kind of wait until I see something that's worth pursuing. And one really good trick here is if you are going to use Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace where you actually meet up with people in real life, make sure they always come to you. That way you don't waste that much time driving all the way out in the middle of nowhere and then you find out they already sold it or they want a much higher price than what you planned on buying it for or something like that. So tell them to meet at a convenience store that's like around the block from where you live so it's very easy for you. The only time you'd go to meet them is if it's something really big that they'd have to move or if it's just such a good deal that you have to go. Now I've also sold a ton of different items on eBay. One I had some pretty good success with was colognes as well as perfumes. Another one I've heard of is buying different keyboards for laptops like an old broken MacBook Pro. You buy the keyboard and then you sell the individual keys for sometimes three dollars or even up to ten dollars for each individual key. So you might buy the entire broken laptop for thirty dollars and then you sell all the parts for somewhere around 300 to 500 dollars. I've had a lot of success with phones, iPads, uh, different accessories, laptops, game consoles, bikes. The trick here is to just be creative, keep an eye out on the market, and just think of different things that people might be looking to buy. You know, people do this with cars all the time as well. They'll buy a broken down car and then sell each individual part for sometimes three to four times what the car would be worth. And you always want to avoid any item that's in a competitive niche. So something that big companies can manufacture, like for instance, um, covers for phones, you probably don't want to buy and sell those just because you're going to be competing with big companies. All right, I work super hard on these videos and I made these right here just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring little notification bell, and then comment down below any ideas you have for other videos or your thoughts on this video. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.